So this week we are going to talk more about designing in 3D with Photoshop CS5 Extended. Now, the technique we're going to be using today can actually be used in Photoshop CS4 Extended because we are not going to be using Repuse to extrude any objects. We're actually going to create 3D from 2D images and graphics and stuff. So. We will begin with the background. I'm not going to build this uh, element or this design on a textured background, as you see, but I don't want the, the texture to look like it does now in its natural state. This is the original image of this rust texture. And the first thing I want to do is actually remove the color information. So to do that, I'm just going to uh, press D on my keyboard, set the default colors, go under Image, Adjustments, and we'll choose Gradient Map. And it goes ahead and makes it black and white, and there we go. Now, what I want to do is fade to black all the edges of this graphic. Now, I can certainly grab the gradient tool here and then use the foreground the transparent gradient, which is the second one right here, and go ahead and draw the gradient. Now, normally it would be in normal mode, and that would draw the gradient and give me a pretty good looking fade. But what I'm going to do is change the blend mode of this gradient tool from normal to soft light. And what that's going to do is actually leave some of the lighter elements alone when I drag this gradient in. Notice it's leaving some of the lighter areas in there so we can maintain some of that texture without drawing a gradient over it to completely wipe it out altogether. So we're still maintaining some texture but darkening it, giving it a very cool vignette look. Now I'm going to give it a color by simply going into my layers panel and into the adjustment layer and or adjustment layer menu here and choose hue saturation. And inside here we're going to uncheck on colorize and then move the hue slider over towards more of a gold or or more of a yellow gold color. We'll increase the saturation here. There it is. That looks like it might work pretty well. Now, again, it is an adjustment layer, so we can always come back and make an adjustment later if necessary. So my background is set. Let's go ahead and bring in the image we're going to composite in here, and that's this photo here of this guy. Looks like he's working out. I'm gonna go ahead and take that and let's create kind of a sports ad look, almost kind of a cool 3D look for a sports ad. So I've got this image uh, dragged and drop it in. I'm gonna press Command or Control T, and that's gonna put me in free transform mode, and I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this image down slightly. I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and the Option key, that would be Shift Alt if you're on Windows, and then grab this top right corner handle and just drag this down. Holding the Shift key down uh, keeps it proportionate, and holding the Option key scales it to the center point. So I'm just going to scale it down to, to about right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer above that image layer, and then we're going to we're going to grab our brush tool, and this is an effect that I actually saw on a movie poster, it was kind of cool, using a simple brush. I'm just going to grab inside of my brushes here, and if you go into the flyout menu of your brush panel, you can go in here and choose natural brushes, and it will give you these cool scattered brushes here. So I'm going to go ahead and select one, and then open up the brush options here, this little icon next to the brush menu, or go under window and choose brush. And inside here, we're going to go in first into the brush tip shape section and go right here to this small preview and just take this top handle and squash the brush down a little. And then we'll go ahead and increase the spacing a little bit. Notice we're getting a little bit of a scatter element there. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to give this a little bit more interest by activating shape dynamics and then activating pen pressure right here under the size jitter. Leave the size jitter set to zero, but go ahead and turn on pen pressure if you are using a pressure sensitive tablet. Don't necessarily need the pen pressure, but it does add a more interesting effect to it. Now, down here in the angle setting, we're going to set the control to direction. This will allow us, when we draw the brush, when we go either up or down, left or right, it will stay aligned with it. So set the angle to direction for the control setting and leave the slider here to zero. So, one more thing we're going to do is to go in here and click on dual brush and what that's going to do is allow us to assign another scatter brush and then through the blend modes here, let's go ahead and uh, leave this on linear height, we can actually increase let's go ahead and increase the size here into the dual brush. You can modify the and basically break up the brush by using these settings, increasing the size and notice there's a little bit more variation to the brush and when I brush with it here it looks pretty good. So that's what we have. We have a simple um, scatter brush or natu our natural uh, media brush here 
as our main brush with the shape dynamics using pen pressure and the angle set to direction and then another brush using the dual brush here that's blending with it through this linear height blend mode and you can try other blend modes to see how the brushes blend in fact look like color burn tends to break it up a little bit more giving me a more interesting effect I think I like that better actually so we'll leave that in color burn and now our brush is pretty much complete so I'm going to close this and on it that new blank layer remember we're on a new blank layer I'm just going to draw some lines both up and down along the area of this photo in fact I'm going to go ahead and offset this photo to the right just a little bit and then again on that layer I'm just going to hold down the shift key and just draw some lines and then kind of frame it out and this was a really cool poster in that uh, made it look like little lines that were just kind of scattered along the area here let's put some over here and then just putting some more over here off to the side because we're gonna add some text here in just a moment and we'll just add a few more so what you're doing, if you hold down your mouse or hold down the shift key and drag over and then not release, you just hold down the shift key and click in another area, it's going to continue that line. So you want to release the shift key and then click in a new area to start a new line every time, just like that. There we go. There we go. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. All right, so we've got our line elements. We've got our photo. Now we're going to add one more layer, and that is a text layer. I'm going to go ahead and click and set a text layer and just type the word push like he's pushing himself to the to the limit and notice it's in a big bold font in fact it is in uh, Helvetica black up here as you can see in my options bar so I'm gonna position this right about here on the layout now at this point this layout isn't looking too bad it's got kind of a cool uh, grungy feel about it we're gonna take it to that next level by putting it in 3d space so on this layer, I'm going to first select that text layer that's at the top of the layer order here. Go under 3D and choose new postcard or new 3D postcard from layer. And again, you can do these in CS4 as well as CS5 extended versions. Select the next layer underneath, go under 3D, 3D postcard. And lastly, the photo, 3D, 3D postcard. Now we're going to go ahead and merge all these together by, again, selecting that topmost layer and then holding down the shift key and select the next layer up under it to select both layers go under 3d merge 3d layers and then we'll do the same thing with the photo and the rest of the 3d elements go under 3d again merge 3d layers now what you can do is take your 3d object rotation tools here in the toolbar and maneuver this in 3d space now you'll notice that it's spaced out from when we merge them together it by default spaces out the elements just a little bit so I can uh, nudge this over and have this in a really cool position right here now I could leave it like this and it does look pretty cool but let's take it to another level by opening up our 3d panel if we go under window and go to 3d here is where you can access the 3d scene now I'm gonna go over to the third or actually it's the second icon over here which is the 3D mesh section. And here you have the individual meshes of the lettering, those painted lines, and the photo. So we're going to select the mesh containing the photo. And then down here in the 3D panel, and where these tools are located, we're going to look for the 3D mesh tools. So we'll grab this top one, the 3D mesh rotate tool, and then go in here and just rotate the photo. So notice we can have control over 3D elements individual 3D elements contained in a single 3D layer. So I'm just going to give, give us a little bit of a rotation here. Perhaps push it back in space a little. And let's take the overall 3D object and just slide it a bit closer. Now, when I rotate this overall object in 3D, you can see we've got a very interesting thing happening here with those elements in 3D space. Now, one last final touch you can do to this, something really cool is if you go in your toolbar and go down here where the 3D object rotation tools are, just beneath that you have the 3D camera tools. So click on that and hold and go down here and choose the 3D zoom camera tool. This is pretty cool. You're going to go up in the options bar and you'll notice over here to the far right side we have the depth of field blur. So I'm going to go in there and enter 2 for that and you'll notice the image will get blurred 
And what you can do is set the focal point by holding down the Option key on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and then just click. Notice it changes into a little target. Just click on the area you want to be in focus. So I'm just going to click on this middle area right here, and notice the blur comes out here, giving us that much more of a feeling of depth with a very realistic depth of blur when we move it around. Very, very cool stuff. Again, you can take advantage of 3D in a very creative way without ever using the de repose features, but just putting flat two-dimensional objects in 3D space and then putting them in a very, very interesting composition.